All right, we are live here from Cancun, Mexico, and the Sands Music event happening all week. And when I saw this year's lineup come out, I lit up when I saw this guy was on it because he is uh, one of my all-time favorite singers, one of the greats of all time. And I am so honored that he's taken some time out from the beautiful weather out there and the pools and the beaches to sit in here with me and yap for a bit. Lou Graham is here. Good to see you, Lou. Good to see you, Eddie. How you doing, man? How you I'm doing? Well, yeah, doing very well. You look great. How's your health? My health is good. I'm being a good boy, and uh, I'm enjoying life. What is what is constitute uh, being a good boy for Lou Graham? What were when you were a bad boy? What were you doing? Uh, same thing all the bad boys were doing. Yeah. You know? And uh, at some point, I, I made this, the decision that I had had enough of it and uh, took took measures to to straighten myself out and and live right. How difficult was that for you to do coming up in the 70s, a big successful rock band, all the trappings of the excess and all that? How difficult was it for you to get right? Uh, it, it, it was difficult and, and uh, there, was, there was a little red character with horns who sat on my shoulder that did not want me to get right. Mm. And, and uh, I... I um, I needed to because I was jeopardizing my marriage and and uh, I didn't want my kids to to know me as this alter ego that that the the um, that that I would become you know when when uh, I was in excess mm. so 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 I I I'd had enough of that anyways you know you know foreigner foreigner toured for long amounts of time when we were on the road and at some point we 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 um we just you know we 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 uh, partied hardy and and often and and uh and and i i honest i honestly got tired of life that way and i i made i took steps um well, first of all, I I, um, I became born again, mm -hmm. and and uh, and then I went to immediately. I went to Hazelton, and this happened right after Foreigners, uh, um, the original band Foreigners' last show at Madison Square Garden. What year are we talking about? Uh, talking about ninety ninety. 93, 92. So when you, because you had left the band for a couple of years and then you came back. Yes. So it was then. Yes. And you guys played the garden. And yes. then that was the height of where you felt you were having a problem? It, it, it was, you know. Um, at any rate. And the, Hazleton is a rehab facility? It's in, it's, uh, in northern Minnesota. Okay. And, and uh, after, after the garden, uh, all, all the record company execs were there and and uh all, all the the uh all our friends in 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 other rock bands and it, it was it was a wonderful time but but uh at at some point uh, uh i knew that I, I was i was off the tracks and and when i got back to my hotel i i knew i was not going to make my flight the next day next early morning i was flying back to rochester and i knew that i was not going to get i was going to get little to no sleep and i was not going to make that not going to make that flight so when i did get up the next day I, I called my my attorney and and he's also very good was also a very good friend of me mine at the time and uh, told him my situation and asked them if he knew of a place that i could i could rehab and and turn my life around and he suggested Hazelton, and uh, so, so I called my wife and let her know I was not coming home, and that I was I was going to take care of a, a long-standing problem. And she knew exactly what I meant, and she told me go get it. How long were you there for, Lou? A month. A month, and and obviously, did it did that month set you right from that point on, or were there relapses and you had to go back? Because you no. hear a lot about that with people who go through relapses. I'd, I'd been to a few other places before but but they were two week stints and um they were holistic and and it, it kind of it kind of set you where you think you ought to go but 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 hazelton really was like a boot camp 
Because you hear those stories of, of so many musicians or actors or whatever going to rehab and they, uh, they were bringing in drugs in the back room while right. they were in there and they were partying and everything. You were, you were committed to it. You weren't messing around. I wasn't messing around. And, and there were some characters in my, it was, it was like a, uh, well, it was like a boot camp and they, they had different uh, um, halls or different, different uh, almost like, fraternities little little groups of guys like 16 guys and then another group of 16 guys then another group of 18 or 20 women and stuff like everybody was separated into little camps you know mm -hmm. and and uh so the, the the guys that i was in camp and one guy was a northwest airlines pilot oh wow yep you don't want a pilot being high flying well, a plane he told us stories that that were unbelievable wow and and uh also uh, uh a a a mobster a, a new york city mobster oh wow went there to straighten out oh wow yeah it, it was it was it was a collection of really different uh, um different people I was going to say, I don't think that airline is still going anymore. That might be the reason you, why. You know what? It's too bad. It was a great airline. I, I never thought. flew it, but it's like, you, you don't, I mean, it's, you know, God forbid something happens on the plane, but you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. If you, if you don't mind me asking, um, without being too personal, you said you could, you, you would turn and it was jeopardizing your relationship and everything. What, what was your biggest issue? Was it drugs, alcohol, or both? It was both. Both. It was both. You didn't it was, discriminate. It, it was drugs more than alcohol, but alcohol was was right up there. And when, you when you're talking about drugs, hard drugs or you know, co I'm, uh, cocaine, co cocaine, cocaine, mainly. You weren't injecting stuff. No, no. Okay, but that was enough to set you off. And it, 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 to it your was. credit, you realized you needed help, and that's probably why you're still sitting here right now. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, um, you know, there, there there started to be a lot a lot of uh, us rock and rollers that were were dropping, yeah. You know, from 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 overdoses and and accumulated use. And uh, I did not want to be that statistic. You know, I was just talking to some friends about uh, of mine about. I just saw Aerosmith play recently, mm -hmm. and their residency in Vegas was pushed back mm -hmm. a month because Stephen had to go to rehab again. And he was very open about it and talked about it. And he had had some surgery done on his feet. And they gave him painkillers and he got hooked on them. Jeez. And he immediately recognized it and got into rehab. And, and he's 75 and he's still amazing at what he can do. And I said to my friends, I said, you know what? Credit to him for realizing yes. how quickly he needed help because a guy with that much wear on the tread from the years and decades of doing that, he wouldn't, he wouldn't endure it at 75 more than a few days, I wouldn't think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, well. You you, you, you got to know yourself at that age. Boy. Yeah, you know? I want to ask you: Do you you had um, an issue uh, with your health where you had a, a brain? You had brain surgery, right? Yes, I did. And do you think, or did doctors tell you your issues with that were at all in any way due to your addictions or uh, no? I thought for sure that it was. Mm -hmm. But but uh, when after the MRIs were taken and and I spoke to uh, the doctor that was going to operate on me, he says he says don't even think that he says he says you were born with this tumor. Mm -hmm. he but says, it wasn't cancerous, right? It was not cancerous, but it finally got big enough to 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 be an issue in your life. And what? How was it manifesting yourself? Did you feel pain? Were you getting headaches? I was getting headaches. I was I was suffering from from spotty long and short term memory lapses. I go to call my parents, and halfway through dialing the number, I couldn't remember the last four numbers. Oh wow! Yeah, and and you know little things like that, but but stuff that I mean it bothered the hell out of me, you know, and and uh, I'd be getting fits of dizziness, and you know, and and. Uh, I had I had about three MRIs in three different places, and each doctor told me to go home and put my affairs together. Oh my gosh! Yep. And and so I was I was home and I was putting my affairs together, and I happened to see on uh, 2020, the the program 2020, yeah, uh, a segment about a doctor in Boston. His name was um, Doctor Black. And he was the purveyor of 
operating on inoperable brain tumors using laser surgery. And uh, so after the, after the segment on TV, I called his office early the next morning and uh, told his personal secretary about my situation. And she says, hang on a second. She goes, and so this was Tuesday morning. And she goes, we have an opening on Thursday. Can you get here tomorrow? So I flew there the next day, and they did more MRIs on me. And uh, at 5 in the morning, Thursday morning, they were wheeling me into the operating room. Now, what year was this? This was 1999. No, sorry, 1997. So 25 years ago. And it, so is that procedure that you had in that sort of surgery become more of the norm now, do you know? Yes, it is. It is. So you were one of the first or earliest to have it. Yes, I was. What was that recovery like for you? It was about eight years. Wow. Eight years till I was still alive. I consider myself fully recovered. Uh, so the, the surgery took 19 hours. And, and uh, when the doctor came in to see me, I, I slept a, a full day and a half after the surgery. When he finally came in to see me and we talked for a while, he, to, he told me, he says, he says, uh, told me how difficult the surgery was. And, and um, he says, you, you've got another battle to fight. He goes, your recovery is going to be long and intense. He goes, he says, just, just deal with it. He says, you'll be feeling better and better slowly, and at some point you'll, you'll be back to 100%. And, sh and sure enough, you know, I, I was so pleased that that tumor was, was, was removed from me, but, but uh, I, I immediately um, developed sleep apnea. You know, I couldn't get to sleep at night. I'd be waking up in the middle of the night in cold sweats. Well, sleep apnea is when you don't get enough oxygen when you sleep. That's right. And that, that was a byproduct of, because that can be for a few different reasons. It yes. could be because you weigh too much. I had it for 10 years, and I lost some weight, and it went away. But it's not, a big rumor about that is it's exclusive to be, being heavy. It's not. Right. I have friends that weigh 100 pounds and have it. So right. you can have it for a variety of reasons. But you had it because of the surgery. Yes. Wow. But, but, but uh, I was on massive steroids after the surgery for about 10 years. I mean, massive steroids. So it may have blown up your larynx or something. Well, it blew up a number of things. I, I gained about 150 pounds. You, got, you were that heavy. I, my, my weight as an adult was 145 pounds. So you were almost at 300? Yep, 290 pounds I was. Were you ever seen like that? I don't recall. Seeing I was on pictures. stage. I was on stage like that. Were you really? Yep. I don't recall seeing you like oh, that. Oh yeah, uh, I'd be hearing shouts from from people in the audience, going, "Better lay off the pasta and sauce, or better better f skip those burgers, or something." You know, people can be pretty cruel. Of course, yeah. And and uh, and it was your medication. It was my medication. And and how about this? When when I went in for surgery. We had to cancel uh, uh, the Far East, Japan, Australia, uh, uh, a, whole, a whole Far Eastern swing of, of touring with Foreigner. And my, my surgeon told me, uh, you know, I, 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 have, I had a drag race car myself, too. I'm, I'm a car, uh, car fanatic. And, and he told me not, not to drive that car anymore for a long time and he said he, he, he said i don't want you touring with the band he says for at least a year and two months after i got out of surgery i was on the road with foreigner yes oh my gosh because because when they can't when they postponed the shows that i was supposed to play when i went in for surgery mm -hmm. they rescheduled them for for three or four months later you know that they should have they should have waited until they sure. got they got my prognosis. Right. But but they rescheduled them without without waiting, and and I was told that that the band would be under massive lawsuits if we didn't if we didn't perform the shows the second time at least. You know. And how did you do on those shows? I'll tell. Let me tell you something. I 
had to I had to have the lyric I had to have some of the lyrics to every song written down on a white piece of paper with a big black marker and taped to the floor. And, so basically, and, not a teleprompter, handwritten out. Handwritten out, yeah. Um, and, and it wasn't the whole verse. If if I could if I could remember the first two or three words, the rest of the verse would come to me. But but as the music's leading up to the verse, I would blank out. And that's the way I performed with the band for for about a year. Wow. Unbelievable. I mean, I don't want to spend this whole time talking about your health. I want to talk about music, of course. Sure. But last thing that I want to ask you about... It was hell, let me tell you. I would imagine. But the, the last thing I want to ask you about health-wise, I mean, again, I'm not just saying this to be nice. You look great. Uh, is all of this behind you now? As far, do you have to still go through anything to check in your head and I, all of that? I, I, every, every two years, I have an MRI to make sure nothing, nothing new is returning. And so far, it's been 100% clean. Great. And how do you feel now vocally? I'm I'm up to par on what I was 20 years ago. Is that right? I swear to you. So you feel like you can sing it all right now? No. I, and I do. You do? Well, I'm going to see you tonight. I can't wait. Good. <laughs> I can't. It's been too long since I saw you sing. Um, there, there's so much I want to, if you have the time, I want to, uh, Joel, I want to, let me do a quick little break here. And then when we come back, I want to take as much as the second hour as we can, because I want to talk to you about music, the earlier, early years. I want to talk to you about Foreigner. Of course, I want to talk to you about your solo stuff. There's a bunch of stuff. And if you're cool and you got the time. Yeah. I, have you got a good level on me now? Yeah, I think we're good. We're, we're good. We can hear Lou just fine, right, Joel? Oh, yeah, we're good. Beautiful. Good. The great Lou Graham with me. Uh, honored to have him here on Trunk Nation. So much to cover in the world of music. But the great news as we take this break and we come out of it is you just heard he is good health-wise and he's back to singing all the stuff again, which is awesome to hear. So we'll get into some great uh, music talk with Lou right after this on Trunk Nation, Faction Talk 103.